These are the solutions for the study guide for test qu or quiz 22. So let's take a look at our first problem here. And it says that we're supposed to use the quadratic formula to solve this equation. So we first have to pull out the A term, the B term, and the C term. And so C is the constant, and you always have to look at the sign in front of the term as well. B is the number in front of x, and A is the number in front of x squared. Now you can only do this when it's set equal to 0, so make sure everything is on one side of the equal sign. So we go ahead and substitute into our formula. Remember, the formula goes this way, negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So I'm substituting the numbers in there. It's going to be a negative 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared minus 4 times 5 times by negative 2. And so all over, and then 2 times by 5. So I'm going to go ahead and find out what one of them is at one time. So I'm going to use the calculator to help me figure that out. So I'm going to first substitute in my values. So <clears throat> we're going to start with pressing the fraction button. And we'll enter negative 12. And then I'll press plus the square root of 12 squared minus and then 4 times by 5 times by negative 2 and then bring the cursor down and then 2 times by 5. And so I go ahead and press that and it gives me this value right here and I press SD and it gives me my answer. Now when I go ahead and I'm supposed to round to the hundredths place so looking at this the 6 is big enough to round the 5 up to the next place value. So I'm going to write the answer as one or 0 0.16. So we'll write that in here, 0 0.16. Now that was when I had the plus sign in front. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to have the minus sign. So let's go ahead and go back to <clears throat> the calculator, and I'll press the replay button. I'll be bring me back into the equation, and I'm just going to bring the cursor over to the, my, the sign in front of the radical sign. So that one right there. Now I'm going to press delete and then minus, and now I'll press equals. Brings me to the same equation, but this time, oops, let's see here. It didn't look like it worked out there, so let me go back to that equation. So let me press SD and then go back to that. And so I'll bring the cursor back, just press the plus sign there instead, so we'll delete and then press minus this time, that looks better, and press equals, and it still showed me that last one, so it keeps on saying the plus sign right there, so let's go ahead and, oh I think that's because they went ahead and did some division, so let's check and see, we got, there it is, negative 2.55, so on this one, I'm going to go ahead and round to the hundredths, so the 6 is big enough to round that 5 up one space. So we're going to write the answer as negative 2.56. So that's how I came up with those values. Let's take a look at the next problem. It says Laura launched a rocket whose height uh, in feet is given by this equation, where h is the feet above the ground in the equation. Uh, in feet, and that's what h represents, feet above, or height above the ground in feet. t is the time in seconds. She claims that the rocket landed on top of a 99-foot building. So is this possible? So they're not asking for us to solve for t. What we're trying to see is if this is possible. So this is a height right here. So let's go ahead and substitute that in for h. So we're going to have 99 equals negative 16t squared plus 80t. So I bring the 99 over. Remember, as I said before, we always have to have these set equal to 0, like this one was, so that we can figure out what our A term, B term, and C terms are. So here's our equation. And so this was just taking away 99. So I'll take away 99 on this side, and now it's set equal to 0. So now I'm going to use the discriminant. So use the discriminant. I use the discriminant because I'm not trying to find out what the values are for, for t. I just want to know if it's going to end up working out. So I'm going to use this portion, the b squared minus 4ac. And so if this is positive, it means yes. 0 would be a yes also, because that means it just reached that value. If it's negative, it's a no. So I take the b term, 80, and I square it, minus 4 times by negative 16 times by negative 
99. So let's go ahead and do some of that work. So in the calculator, I'll go ahead and enter. Yeah, let me pull this out of the way so I can see what I'm entering here. So I'm going to enter the 80 squared and then minus and then 4 times by negative 16 times by negative 99. And I do the work and I get 64. So what that tells me is that when I went ahead and did this, I ended up getting 64, which is positive. That's all I need is to see if it's a positive number. And this is positive. And so what that tells me is since the discriminant since the discriminant is positive, there are two times the rocket will be at 99 feet. So that definitely means that it will reach 99 feet and surpass that distance. So let's move, we'll move on to the next one. It says the flight of a baseball <clears throat> after it's hit, and that's hit off four feet off the ground. It's modeled by this function. So the four feet off the ground came in right here. See, it's four feet off the ground. That is the initial height of where it was hit at 75 feet per second. And so it says that H is the height of baseball in feet, and T is the time in seconds. Round to the nearest hundredth. How long will it take to take it before the ball is one foot off the ground? Okay, so we're going to put one foot in for h. So 1 equals negative 16t squared plus 75t plus 4. So I'm going to take away the 1 from all sides. So I'm left with negative 16t squared plus 75t <coughs> plus 3. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem here. And not Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use the quadratic formula and substitute my numbers into the formula. So I've got negative 75, and then it's either going to be plus or minus. Now I'm thinking it's going to be minus, and I'll show you why in just a minute. 75 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times by 3, all over 2 times by negative 16. The reason why I'm going with the minus is that. I'm dividing, this will be a negative number, and since this makes a negative, when I multiply negative 16 by 2, it'll be a negative into a negative, which will make a positive. So let's go ahead and do that work. So I'll substitute my numbers in there. Bring this down so I can see the numbers. <coughs> so it's fraction negative 75, and then minus the square root of 75 squared minus 4 times by negative 16 times by 3. And then this is 2 times by negative 16 equals. And there it gives me the exact, or the answer I'm looking for, 4.72. So I'm supposed to round to the nearest hundredths. So looking at this, the 7 will round the 2 to a 3. So I'm going to write 4.73. These are in seconds. And so that's the time it takes the ball to be one foot off the ground. So let's take a look at the next problem. <clears throat> and it says that we're supposed to, uh, that it says the height of the baseball after is hit is modeled by this equation, where y is the height in feet, x is time in seconds. After the ball's hit, find the time. Okay, so now we've got to read real carefully here. It's asking us for the time it takes the ball to reach maximum height. Okay, time to reach maximum height. That is just this formula. X equals negative B over 2A. That's all we have to use. It's just the axis of symmetry formula. So I'm going to take the B term, negative 144, over 2 times by negative 16. So I'll do some work there. Negative 144 over negative 32. And when I do that division, that leaves me with 4.5. So 4.5, so it's going to be 4.5 seconds is the time it takes that uh, the baseball to reach its maximum height. Now the next problem gives me another equation it's in a rocket. It's modeled by this equation. 
Why is height in feet x times seconds? But this time it says find the rocket's maximum height. So it's not saying time to maximum height. However, we have to find the time first. So negative b over 2a. <clears throat> so it's going to be a negative 384 all over 2 times by negative 16. So we do that division. Negative 384 divided by negative 32. Get that 32 by multiplying 2 and 16. And I do this work and I get 12. All right, so it's 12 seconds. 12 seconds to maximum height. But that's not what they wanted. They wanted the maximum height. So I'm going to take that 12 and I'm going to substitute into this equation. It's not h this time, it's y. So y equals negative 16x squared plus 384x. Oops, 384x. 4x and then plus 1. So I'm taking the 12 and putting it in for these x's. So I've got y equals negative 16 times by 12 squared plus 384 times by 12 plus 1. So let's go ahead and do that work. So in the calculator, I'll enter those numbers. And let's see if I can find a spot for it. There we go. <coughs> So we've got negative 16 times by, and then 12 squared, and then plus 384 times by 12, and then we're going to add 1. And when I do that work, I get 2,305. So 2,300, oops, 305 feet is what that maximum height is. So moving on to the next one, it says Ed is cutting carpet for a rectangular room with area of this, 672 square feet. The length of the carpet, okay, here's where it gets real important. The length of the room is three feet longer than twice the width. Okay, so length is three feet longer than twice the width. And so the width, well, that's just W. So we're going to go ahead and sketch a little picture here. <clears throat> so here's my length, which is two feet wider than... than Three, t or, uh, three feet longer than twice the width, and the width is w, and the area is 672. So I'm going to do length times width equals area. So the length I'm going to use is 2w plus 3. The width is just w, and it equals 672. So I'll distribute, and I have 2w squared plus 3w equals 672. So I'll move the 672 over to the other side. So I have 2w squared plus 3w minus 672 equals 0. <coughs> so from this point, substitute into the Pythagorean's or into the quadratic formula. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, and then 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 672 all over 2 times by 2. Now, there's only going to be one good answer. The other is extraneous. So let me erase this plus or minus sign. I'm going to pick the one that I think is going to be right. So I think the one that's going to be right is the plus sign this time. And the reason is, is that this bottom number is positive. And so when I divide, I need to make sure that the top is positive so that the bottom, when I divide into it, will make a positive number as well. So it should be a plus. So let's go ahead and do the work. <coughs> So I'll substitute the numbers into the formula. So I've got negative 3. We'll first start with the fraction. R and negative 3 plus the square root of 3 squared and then minus 4 times by 2 times by negative 672. And down below, I have 2 times 2. And I press the equal sign. It is 17.59. So that represents, and I'm supposed to round, let's see, to the nearest hundredth. So the five right here in the thousands is going to round that up to 60. So 7.60. And that represents the width. All right, so to find the length, I'm going to substitute L equals, and then I'm going to use the same number I had. It's the 2W plus 3. So I'm going to plug in, and instead of this number here, I'm going to use the number that's on the calculator. And so I'm just going to press this times by 2 and then plus the 3. And that's going to give me, I 
there at 38.19. So the one right here is going to not round this up, but round it down. So I'm going to end up having this as my answer here. So erase that part. So I've got 38.19. So the length is 38.19. And this one again was not big enough to round that up, so that's why I'm going to leave it. So there's my length, and these are in feet. So I'll put feet there and feet here. So I did not round the number until after I was done with the calculation. So let's take a look at the next problem. And this one says that we're supposed to, what is the radius of a sphere whose surface area is given? by 100 square or centimeters squared to use the formula to determine the surface area of the sphere. Okay, so what we're supposed to do is they're asking for what the radius is. And so we're going to go ahead and write down that formula, s equals 4 pi r squared. And we know what the surface area is, so let's go ahead and solve for the radius. I'm going to divide by 4 pi, divide by 4 pi, and so I've got s over 4 pi equals r squared. So I'm taking the square root. And so now I've got the square root of s over 4 pi equals r. So I substitute my numbers in there. I'm supposed to use 3.14 for pi. My s value is 100, 4 times by 3.14. So that equals r. So let's go ahead and substitute the numbers in there. And when I do that, I'm going to press the radical sign this time, then the fraction button, enter 100, and down below, 4 times by 3.14 equals, and there it is, 2.82. This is in centimeters, so 2.82. And that rounds, rounds down, so it's 2.82 centimeters equals the radius. And we were supposed to round to the nearest hundredth, so that's correct. So in this next one, we're supposed to find the slope of the line, because they want us to uh, determine uh, or write a linear equation to match this information. And so the temperature of boiling water is a function of altitude. So temperature is a function of altitude. So this is our y, this is our x. And so I know that's y because the function of tells us this is dependent upon the altitude. So I'm going to first find the slope. m equals 210 minus 209 all over 1000 minus 1500. So this gives me 1 over negative 500. So that's my slope. Now I'm going to find the equation y minus y1. So y minus 210 equals negative 1 over 500 times by x minus 1,000. So I do some work here. y minus 210 equals negative 1 over 500 x plus, and then 500 goes into 1,000 two times, <clears throat> and then I just have to add the 210 to both sides. So y equals negative 1 over 500x plus 212. So there's the equation. Now I'm supposed to say what the slope represents. And so the slope is a change of y over change of x. y represents the temperature. So it means that the slope says that the temperature decreases. Temperature decreases. So the slope is the temperature uh, says the temperature decreases. That's why it's a negative 1 for every 500 feet of elevation gain. Now it's elevation gain because it's a positive 500. So negative 1 up over 500. So down 1 over 500. So the y-intercept is 212. So that represents 212 degrees, which is the temperature of boiling water at sea level. Now sea level is at zero feet. It's at zero feet because if you cover up the x or set that equal to zero, it cancels this term out. So you're just left with y equals 212. Well, the last problem asks us to graph the solution. So we'll start with the y-intercept here, two spaces, and then use the slope. So down and then to the right one each time. So I'll do that a few times, and then I'll look at the line type I've got. It's a solid line, because it has the line underneath it, and then I'll look at the direction I should be shading. And so the shading ends up going below the line, y less than, so I know I need to shade below this line. This next one, so y equals, or y is greater than 
3x minus 4. So down 4 spaces <coughs> and then up 3 spaces over 1. Do that a few times so you get some points on the line. And 3 spaces over 1. Looks good. And it's going to be a dashed line. It's dashed because it does not have the line underneath. And then we'll figure out the shading. Y greater than means you shade above the line. So the only area that agrees is right in this region here. Below the solid line, above the dash line. So those are the solutions that you'll see on this week's test. Problems similar to it.